All right. Hello there, health coaches. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm thinking, how is it possibly the end of April already? I have some summer things like already getting planned. I'm sure you guys do too. And uh, this just popped up. So I wanted to mention it. I might have an opportunity to get together with some health coaches in San Diego this summer. I would love for that to include you. So more details are going to come on that. I know we're all planning things. I got my kids camp. I got to get planned, all the stuff. So I'm going to get details to you as soon as possible. Is anyone here with us live, by the way, who is from San Diego? Just say hi in the comments. But anyway, today we are talking about collecting feedback in your business and how to actually use that feedback, use testimonials. It can be so incredibly helpful. So I would, first of all, I would love to hear if you're already doing this, how you're already doing this. So again, if you're with us live, just pop into the comments, or even if you're watching the replay later, and share maybe one or two ways that you are already collecting feedback in your health coaching business. Like for example, maybe at the end of your coaching program, you have clients fill out some type of form uh, where they get to tell you what the best parts were about the program and anything that they would like to change. Anything like that? All right, we'll see. Before we get into all of this, as you know, running a health coaching business can be overwhelming at times. Yes. <laughs> there are endless tasks to do. There's never enough time as a health coach. You want to focus on what you love to do and like why you got into this business in the first place, which is helping people, not all the admin stuff. And so that's where practice better comes in. Practice better is my favorite complete practice management software. It's founded by health and wellness practitioners for health and wellness practitioners. It helps automate your booking and your client notes and your invoicing so you can spend more time doing the important stuff. With Practice Better, you can easily create shareable client notes, track your client's progress and engage with them every step of the way. And it integrates very nicely with your other favorite software so all your data syncs seamlessly. If you're nerdy like that and you're syncing things, Practice Better also offers a programs feature which enables you to build and run an automated group program that can earn you passive income. We love passive income. And you'll become part of a global community of wellness professionals who you can learn and grow with. Try any Practice Better plan for free for 14 days. And I've got a cool thing for you as an exclusive offer, offer for my listeners. You'll get 30% off your first three months on any paid plan when you go to healthcoachpower.com slash PB. And you'll want to use promo code HCP30 at checkout. That's health coach power and the number 30, HCP30 at checkout. So you can say goodbye to a patchwork of various softwares and hello to an organized, efficient practice with Practice Better. Now let's get into our show and talk about testimonials and feedback. My guest today is my friend, Brittany, a business success coach with Practice Better, which I just told you all about what Brittany does besides being a total and utter rock star is she helps practitioners tap into the potential of their business and find success. And that's what we do here too. So lots of synergy. Thanks for joining us today, Brittany. Thanks so much for having me, Michelle. I'm so excited to chat with you today. Not the first time you've been on no. the show, but maybe no. it's been a little while. Yeah. We love working together. That's for sure. <laughs> So I love that you suggested this topic. I don't think I've talked about testimonials here on the show in a long time. From your perspective, why do you feel feedback is so important for health coaches to grow their business? Yeah, first and foremost, I mean, I've been in the shoes of like feeling kind of daunted by feedback. Like I was so nervous about this when I was first starting in my career and it was kind of like thrust upon me by the company I was working for that I, I had to have this feedback. It was really scary. But I've learned through my career just how important it is. I think that feedback and testimonials will highlight or make aware opportunities for where you need to improve or what you need to do to focus on business growth. Um, it's really difficult to have an unbiased look at what we do and how it's being received by either new customers or how the overall experience is being received by our current clients. And we know, of course, that it takes two. It's as a coach, you know, you have to educate, guide, and support your clients, and the client has to show up. They have to take action. 
but feedback is going to show you all the different ways of how these things can be better accomplished. Like what service is best resonating with people if you need to offer more hands-on support, um, you know, if you need to set better boundaries or be more clear with your expectations, the people that experience your work firsthand are going to be the best perspective on what's working and what's not working. And I just think that's so crucial if you intend on scaling your business and growing. Well, did you ever get feedback after you started asking? And that was like very hard to receive. Uh Unfortunately, it happens. That's just like part of, you know, part of the course that you will, um, you know, have that uncomfortable or discomfort when collecting feedback. Uh, there's going to be positive feedback and negative, and that's maybe going to be hard to hear. Um, but we just have to keep the bigger picture in mind. I think that's what I always told myself and what I'd recommend to others is that ultimately both the positive and the negative feedback are going to help our business and our client care evolve. I also think, you know, how we respond to this feedback can make all of the difference. So it's worth noting that you might not always agree with the feedback that you're getting. Like you might have a totally different experience about what you're seeing back from your client. But I think if you have, you know, humility and accountability and you can handle these things with grace, um, it's going to help ease the discomfort that you may feel with these interactions and my kind of fake it till you make it tip with all of this, with the discomfort of asking for feedback is that there's opportunities to automate some of this stuff. So while we're working on overcoming some of this mindset stuff that can feel really uncomfortable with asking for feedback, let's just kind of put the tech to work and have it automate, um, you know, ask for feedback in a way where we don't have to manually um, stew over the discomfort of asking for it and just put that to work so that we're still collecting the feedback and we don't have to like, uh, you know, be in our heads too much about it every single time that we are asking. Well, we are working on that mindset stuff of getting a little bit more comfortable with it. Okay, good. I'm glad that you could share, you know, that it's not always going to be positive. Sometimes it's going to be positive. It's going to lead to amazing testimonials and case studies. And sometimes it won't. My like favorite feedback story is like years and years ago I offered a program and at the end I asked for feedback and I received this like scathing review from this woman just angry and spiteful I mean it had been a free program so I was having a hard time understanding how she could be that angry about it it's not like she had paid something and um, it was it was fascinating for me and I took it really hard because I was very new in my business and then she um, she emailed again the next day and apologized and said, I was having a bad day and I took it out on you. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's totally uncommon. People just are reactive and, and project their bad days onto us. So I think that's a really good tip to keep in mind when you are receiving feedback is that it's not always entirely about you as much as like feedback should be, unfortunately. Yeah, but like that helped me. Like from then on, I'm like, oh, okay. So, <laughs> so if it doesn't feel good, it, it's probably has nothing to do with me at all. And then it, it's just easier to just hear what they're saying and try to find some truth in it. And anyway, most of the time they're it's great feedback, but every now and then I think that's what leads to the discomfort. So you mentioned having these things automated, having like what, like a form go out automatically can like just take some of the discomfort away. Is that what you were getting at? Because then we're not thinking about it. It just happens in the background. Yeah, I mean, when we're stewing over this discomfort or the potential for negative feedback, we know we're so passionate about what we do that we really tie ourselves and our self-worth into, into people ex enjoying our experiences and all that, that um, it can shy us away from asking feedback in general. So um, yeah, I recommend just having a form automatically delivered to your client so that it becomes so routine for you. Um, and you don't really have to think about it. And then you are going to get that feedback, see the immediate value in it. And I think it should encourage you and hopefully inspire you to get a little bit more comfortable with the overall idea of feedback. And uh, yeah, just knowing that positive or negative, there's so much you can take away from it. Well, it's actually one of my favorite ways, because everyone will always ask, what's the best way to collect a testimonial? And, you know, you can explicitly ask, will you write a testimonial for me or whatever? But I find that when someone is just saying what they're going to say anyway, you know, and, and this would be one of those times if you were to send out a form and say, Hey, what were some of the best things you got from working together? Or what was the, you know, your biggest achievement or what are you most proud of? Or however you phrase it, they're not thinking I am leaving a testimonial right now. 
<laughs> they're just answering the question. And sometimes you can like literally just copy and paste it and say, Hey, would you mind if I use this in my future marketing materials? And it sounds, it doesn't sound stiff. It sounds yeah. like something that really came from their heart because it did. Absolutely. I think timing of this comes into play. So I actually encourage the coaches and the practitioners that I speak to, to ask for feedback before you've completed your work with them. Mm -hmm. So whether that's those mini check-ins when you're having your follow-up sessions with them to just check in and say, how are things going, where you can get those really organic testimonials, but even before you've wrapped up in um, your final services, this is going to allow you to pivot if needed to ensure that they do have a great outcome and experience um, and relevant to what we're talking about today. Great experiences lead to, you know, great testimonials and great word of mouth referrals, but it's great to ask, you know, um, throughout their journey working with you. But then if you want to do it in a maybe more formalized way to just time it in a way that it's before the client has finished wrapping up with you. Because if they maybe express that they haven't achieved their goals or maybe they haven't, you know, hit this certain milestone that they're really eager to hit, maybe you've got the opportunity now to come up with a succession plan for them or to work with them for more sessions, sell them for, you know, a few more um, follow-ups where you can have a better chance of mitigating a poor outcome or a mediocre, mediocre outcome where, um, you know, that is then reflected in their testimonials or their feedback, their, their word of mouth that comes after they've um, finished working with you. So it helps you stay ahead of clients um, and their overall experience. You have a little bit more, I guess, control in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, we're thinking about collecting feedback for us, but also it has this great impact on the clients and their experience. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you know you, if you put it into context where you wrapped up the final session of a package that you've been working with a client for months, and then you ask them, and then you learn that they didn't achieve their goals, or maybe they, they needed a little bit more support or could have used this additional resource. It's almost like too little too late, but if you ask them before that last session takes place, well, maybe you've got the opportunity to work with them for a longer duration of time. And that's beneficial for our business as far as, you know, things like generating a little bit more income, but also saving that client's experience where uh, we're ahead of their needs. And that's going to be reflected in that testimonial that you do collect from them. I can totally see how having this automated would be helpful because I know that when I'm working with clients and sometimes they're just back to back and, you know, you're just trying to like run and have lunch maybe in between sessions. And like, this is something I, I know I have not always been good at. So yes, there are lots of different ways to do it. It could be a simple email, but tell us how practice better can make this easier. Cause I know you have solutions for this exact scenario. Definitely. We certainly do. And this is something that I demo at every single opportunity that I get, because I think this can be a real game changer in coaches and practitioners business. So I love the idea of automating. We've already established that, but um, my preferred workflow of this is setting up that, that customized form in practice better. So I always recommend that you keep it fairly short and succinct. So like five questions so that there's not this barrier of a long form that's going to dissuade a client from actually wanting to fill out this form. Mm -hmm. You can then use our automations feature. So Practice Better, of course, was designed to eliminate repetitive, repetitive admin work. So like I'm laughing because there's yeah. so much of that. There's yes. So <laughs> yeah. We're always mindful of creating opportunities to save practitioners time. And in this instance, it's helpful to just, you know, have that form sent out automatically. And you can actually set up a trigger with our automations feature where uh, you can say before the final session, you're going to have this feedback form delivered to every client. So you're setting this up once and then every client that from here on out is going to receive that form before that final session. Um, and to make this work, I do recommend setting up a service that is actually labeled final session so that this trigger setup is super simple. And that way it's a great um, visual reminder to the client and to you as a practitioner, the coach that you're coming to an end. So great time mm -hmm. to be in that headspace of checking in for feedback knowing that it's time to have those conversations with the client. 
Um, and then it's, it's automated. So the client will receive that feedback form before their final session, they'll fill it out. And then when you do have that last session with them, you can actually use that form as kind of a structure for that conversation, going through it together to say, okay, it looks like you achieved these things, but maybe not this. And what can we do to, you know, either help you get there um, or, you know, just being on the same page as your client. And I really love this form method because we also have a report in Practice Better. It's called the form response summary. And this allows you to consolidate all of the answers from every single uh, one of those forms in one place. So this way you're not you know, wasting si time sifting from one client record to the next, looking through their forms to consolidate all of this information that you've collected. So from every, you know, Every client that has filled out that feedback form, you can go and have one beautiful report that's going to pull all of that feedback, all of those testimonials in one place. Um, and there's, of course, lots of opportunities to have those little mini check-ins, those asks, whether you're doing that through a video session with them or through the secure chat, just to kind of have a, your finger on the pulse of how their experience is going. So that's interesting. And I've heard you talk about this feature before where you can... Um what is the word, not collaborate, not coordinate, but anyway, bring to collate <laughs> all the information that comes from the client forms in one place. And I can think of one way that that could be incredibly useful to be able to do that. And then I'm curious, like if, if there are other ways that I'm not thinking about, because one way that I know this type of feedback um, and this type of data is useful is for future marketing. So if you can look back and see that like, 90% of your clients all mention the same problem, the same term, like they're all talking about midlife weight loss. So they're all talking about like, I don't know the term muffin top, which I hate, but I'm just trying to think of like those words that clients might actually use, you know, like their phrasing. And if you can see that something has been repeated over and over and over again, among your clients, that's a phrase you want to start using in your marketing because yeah. you know that's something that's like very top of mind and relevant for them. So I love it so much, not just to like think to myself, okay, how can I do better? I'm glad I got this feedback, but also to like create smarter marketing. Yeah. Yeah. When we think about feedback, of, co of course, we can start to think about how we can improve in our business, but we can also take positive feedback or common feedback from our clients and apply it into our marketing. So if we have, you know, a piece of common um, feedback, like you said, we can pull that language and use it in our marketing. But if we have a piece of really beneficial or positive feedback that we're receiving, start marketing that as one of the benefits of working with you. Like if, if people are, you know, more energy, if that's something that's coming up or people are, people are meal prepping in less time, whatever it looks like, right? If you're starting to hear more people say some of these similar things, use that to your advantage. You can use that feedback to attract more customers. Um, so there's so much we can do with it, whether it's negative feedback, positive feedback, we can apply it in so many ways in our businesses. That reminds me when I used to run, I used to run a 21 day detox. This is forever ago. And I thought like in my own brain, I thought the best part of it was the protocol that I had put together for this, you know, group detox program. I thought the recipes were pretty darn good. I worked really hard on those and, you know, and I think all that stuff was good, but I remember back then getting feedback and I think it was more maybe things that people just happen to type into, a, you know, our community group or whatever. But I heard them say over and over that the best part of the experience was having the community, which I didn't realize was going to be the biggest draw. So then like that was an opportunity for me to do more with that community, to offer more community based programs to emphasize that more, like you said, like the next time I sell the soul, the detox, I can talk more about the community and why it matters and why it's so great. Cause I know that's something that, man, that made a huge difference for people. Yeah, exactly. We can start to really kind of speak more directly to our clients by paying attention to what they're saying to us. So mm -hmm. um, whether, you know, it's informal collection of feedback in, in your sessions or just in those mini check-ins or a more formalized way, like taking that form, we can really just 
heed so much from, from this feedback. And Practice Better makes it pretty easy to iterate what you do. So if you know you are getting feedback that, uh, you know, more video sessions, more video component to teaching your program would be, be really beneficial, um, go in and record a video and embed it. Like it's, it's very easy to edit what you already have so that, you know, it's not a situation where you're going to get this feedback and feel like you have to start from scratch um, in order to actually apply some of this feedback into your business. So that's awesome. So we're going to like learn more about how we deliver our programs, what our clients need, how to market them. And uh, I just wanted to add that when you get a piece of feedback from somebody, they have this really great result or whatever. Like I said, you can just like copy and paste it. You could use it as is, you know, with their permission. Um, but when we're talking about testimonials, social proof, you know, and we can talk uh, more about what that means. Um, what I love to do with like my best, best clients, the ones that just did the work, saw the results, you know, that just make your heart so glad to have worked together is I try to um, get back to them and ask if they would record a quick video with me. And in that video, I asked them a couple of questions like, where were you before we started working together? What was your life like? What is it like now? What's been your biggest, you know, the biggest changes? What are you most proud of? And, and captured on video because again, with their permission, now you have a testimonial that you could use like a video testimonial. You can also just take the, whatever they said in that video and use it as a written testimonial, or you have the audio, like if you wanted to clip it into a podcast episode or something like that, you get like all those different versions of that testimonial that you can use. So I don't do that all the time, but Hey, if you get back something that's really great, why not make the most of it? Yeah. I love that idea. I, I have the same kind of idea here that when you put together your feedback form, put a little extra question in the bottom saying, um, can I uh, get your testimonial, ask for consent or permission, and then maybe even a follow-up question asking if they would be willing to hop on a call with you to talk about your experience. Um, I think that's going to just lead to so many opportunities and so much flexibility in how you actually use that because we can take that testimonial and use it in basically everywhere that we're talking about our business, whether that's email marketing, your sales page, your website, your social media, Social proof is a big deal these days. It influences a lot of decisions when it comes to purchasing or signing up for things. So um, building up kind of a library of those testimonials that you can pull from when you're creating those different marketing efforts will be huge for you. It is huge. I mean, you can put out any program you want, but if you get a couple of people talking about what a great experience they had working with you, what a great experience they had with this program, how easily they were able to make this change, you know, it it does the work for you of uh, trying to show someone that you are, you have the solution to help them with their problem. So um, when we say social proof, I don't know if you have an exact definition of that, but I just think like what other people are saying. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think of it as like this idea that prospective clients will adopt the behavior or, you know, adapt their behavior to make decisions based on what they see others doing. So if someone's vocal about having a great experience, whether, you know, that's a restaurant or a travel destination or working with a fantastic health coach, they're likely to, um, more likely to consider that as a viable option um, that they'll pursue. So if someone has a great experience, they kind of want the same thing, right? So that's how social proof has this kind of trickle down effect that you see someone who has a great experience you want it, you kind of pursue it. So we can kind of bring that into our business. And I think it's so nice that we can think about the timing of collecting this feedback so that when you are in that, that stage of launching something or building out a new offering, you're not scrambling and thinking about, okay, who from my roster of clients can I go back to and ask for a testimonial? If you build this in as part of your workflow, of working with every single client, you won't have to have that last second scramble to collect these testimonials when, you know, when you actually need to have them and start to utilize them. Oh, yes, I have been there. I'm giggling <laughs> thinking about that last minute scramble. That is for sure. And what you just said reminded me like one time I had a client who she had seen testimonials on my website or whatever. And, um, and when I spoke with her, she was like, I am going to I'm going to do this program. I know this is the right thing for me. Like, I'm going to do so well at this. I'm going to be your next testimonial. Like I'm going to be on your website with a testimonial. And you know what? 
she is like, she, she absolutely lived up to her word. It's like, she saw what other people were doing and she was like, I can do that. I want that for myself. And it gave her, you know, this extra motivation, like I'm going to master this. I'm going to hit my goals. I'm going to work so hard and I'm going to see my face there one day. And it was so cool when that actually happened. Yeah. I think testimonials really serve or like social proof in general serves two different main things of one, letting somebody know that what you're offering is a great fit for them and also setting the tone that they could have that similar experience. And it sounds like that client was like all in based on what she saw. So that's kind of like the ultimate goal is that we want people to have that, that big yes, feeling that huge buy-in when they see testimonials and feedback from our past clients or our community. Yeah. 1000%. Oh, wow. It's such a great idea. Like this idea of building it into your workflow. I cannot emphasize that enough. Like the scramble that you will feel when you need to publish something, you need to launch a program, you need to whatever, get your website up and you think, oh no, maybe I can go back to my client from three years ago and ask for a testimonial because I haven't, I never did it. Like just building it in makes so much sense. So thank you for sharing how that's possible, like through one whole automated platform, like practice better. I think that's the smartest possible way to get it done on a consistent basis. Yeah, absolutely. We're all about making things just a little bit easier because we know that um, business owners certainly have a lot on their plates. So let's simplify at least one element of it, right? Uh, yes. Thank you. And thank you again. And thank you for joining me today, Brittany. I'm really glad to see you here on the show. We'll do it again sometime. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Michelle. And thanks to everybody for joining us. I hope you got some really great ideas about collecting feedback in your business. Thanks again to Practice Better for all their support. And please go try any paid plan of theirs. I think you are going to love it at healthcoachpower.com slash PB and use code HCP30. And we'll see you next time, everyone. Bye-bye.